We are in the kitchen at our Rocky Terrace project, and this is really where I feel we put the most love <laughs> into. We splurged on cabinetry, we splurged on plumbing, the light fixtures, everything here I feel is just really beautiful, and I'm excited to share with you all of the details. I think the first design element, well really of any kitchen, is cabinetry. It's where you're going to spend the most money in a kitchen, and it's where we really spent the most money when balancing out all of the finishes in this entire house. We really wanted the cabinetry to shine with inset cabinetry. We have kind of this transitional style going throughout this house where we're blending traditional elements with more contemporary elements. In the kitchen, we have a lot of very timeless design pieces. And so the inset cabinetry is a very timeless way of doing cabinets. You see this in the UK. This is kind of how the, they do kitchens traditionally. If you're not sure what inset cabinetry is, what, I'll explain it a little bit. In my kitchen, I have full overlay cabinetry, so you can go check out my kitchen video. This is an inset cabinet, and this is a really timeless detail. This is where they have the frame of the cabinet is made, and then the cabinet doors rest within the frame, and they sit completely flush. This is a very beautiful way of making cabinetry, and it's a bit more of an investment, but I think that it's really, really worth it, especially if you like that transitional or traditional style. Whether or not you want to invest in inset cabinetry, there are other ways that you can elevate your cabinetry that aren't a huge jump in, in price. One way is to add legs to islands or legs, like here we have these little leg details on the side of the island. I, when, I think that when you skip island legs, it feels a bit undone or just not finished, not complete, not thought through. And so when I design kitchens, I always like to have a leg support on the island. I also really like to add side panels to the cabinetry. So when I say that, I mean, you're looking at the side of the cabinet rather than just having a flat panel, unless that's the style, adding some sort of detail. So adding in a shaker detail or over here in this kitchen, we added in some board and batten. When using inset cabinetry, I also like to mix up a traditional or standard toe kick. Normally for toe kicks, you see there's like a standard, just kind of four inch delta between the face of the cabinet and the backside of the toe kick. And when we're designing kitchens, we like to put thought into that toe kick. We don't always do a flush toe kick. Here we did a furniture style toe kick. Sometimes we'll, we will do like little legs added in. I call that a cottage style toe kick. I don't know if that's the technical term, but I like to put thought and detail into the toe kick. So here in this house, we did a furniture style where it's flush on the face of the cabinetry. And I think that that just elevates it a bit. I already mentioned this in our laundry room video. I know that I'll probably get questions about, you know, feet running into the base of the toe kick as you're doing dishes and that type of thing. It's not an issue. I mean, I can show you here. Um, when I'm standing, my toes don't run into the toe kick, so it's not an issue. Another detail we did in this kitchen that I think is a quick way and really simple way to elevate the whole entire design is to mix up the hardware. So you don't have to necessarily all do pulls or all do knobs. I think mixing and matching pulls with knobs. So here we have some bin pulls, we have some latches, and we have some knobs. And I think that mixing it all up while maintaining the same style and the same, or the same um, like overall style and the same finish is a great way to just quickly and simply elevate a kitchen design. And if you want to update your kitchen and you don't want to completely redo the kitchen, you can always switch out the hardware and that's a really inexpensive, easy way to update things. One question I get asked all of the time and that oftentimes our clients go back and forth on is countertop material. I think that quartz countertops were super trendy for a while and now I think that we're starting to see a shift away from quartz. I think that quartz is a great option if durability is really your priority. But when I'm trying to balance out durability with design, I like to opt for a natural material meaning quartzite, marble, or in this case, we did granite. And I know it might sound crazy because granite we use like 
early 2000s. It doesn't seem like it might be in style anymore, but we did just this flat black granite, which was very inexpensive. It helped us balance out the cabinetry bill. And I think that the black granite with the really dark green island is something interesting and different, and it feels very timeless. We have a very European style in this kitchen, and so I wanted to carry that through through all of the details, and one way that we carried it through in the countertops is by doing this non-lamb or unlaminated edge. So this is just a two centimeter granite slab placed directly on top of the cabinetry without a subtop. So it looks a bit thinner, it looks a bit daintier. We actually ran it up as a backsplash and then added in a little shelf to kind of cap it off. So this is a great way to kind of save a little bit because tile is expensive, install is expensive. So just running the slab up the back, we were able to utilize all of the slab that we purchased and make the most of our budget. So we really did have to balance the budget, which I think is useful for me to be able to give tips on how to make the most of your build budget. But one area we completely splurged was this unlacquered brass faucet from Duval. I'll put a link below. but. I think that finding those really special pieces that are gonna shine in your project is a great way to kind of have like one star of the show and then let everything else complement it. So this faucet is unlacquered brass. I think unlacquered brass is very timeless and it really complements the whole overall look of the English kitchen. And then we have this gorgeous Shaw's farmhouse sink. When we came into this space, we were handed the set of plans and then we started to work through them to optimize the function and flow. A lot of the time we get architectural plans that don't necessarily reflect optimal flow of interiors, but that's our job, right? To kind of take a look and see where we can make better use of space. So initially the island and the sink were kind of offset from the hood and the range. Symmetry is so important in kitchen design. It's something that I learned early on and I think that if you are at home watching this and maybe you are in the middle of a kitchen remodel, planning a kitchen remodel or a new build, I say symmetry is going to be uh, the number one way that you can really make your space look really nice. So we shifted the sink over to line up exactly center of the range. In doing so, the island is a bit longer. So we have a larger, larger bit of cabinetry on this side versus on this side but we wanted the light fixtures to flank the sink and flank the range symmetrically. So to balance everything out, and I see this in a lot of kitchen designs with this layout, um, just trying to make this island work, what we did is we took this chunk of the island, the long part that made this unsymmetrical, and we turned it into a bookshelf. So this still feels all balanced and symmetrical, and then over here we balanced it out with a bookshelf at the end. Gossamer Veil uh, by Sherwin-Williams, paint color that has kind of stolen my heart. I used it at the shop and we ended up using it in this house too. So we painted all of the doors, trim and molding, Gossamer Veil. And then we did the cabinetry the same color here. So you can see where the crown molding wraps around the room, but it's all tied together with the cabinetry. So I think that if you are going to do contrasting trim with doors, crown, base, that type of thing, then the cabinetry should match that paint color exactly if it's going to be touching the walls. Then for the island, like I mentioned earlier, we did this really dark green, which is complemented by the dark black granite. When thinking about kitchen pendants, I see all of, this, all of the time three kitchen pendants when I'm handed a set of plans and I almost always drop it down to two. I really like two kitchen pendants that flank either side of the sink and the hood, so it's all symmetrical. Um, so we dropped it down to two, and initially there were supposed to be three in here, and we chose these ribbed glass pendants, which I think complement everything else that we've got going on, light fixture-wise, because over here we have the brass dome, so here we have a little bit of brass, we have the glass, which is simple, we have a really soft shape, and I think that it ties everything together. And I also wanted to note that the dining room, we have that Matree shiplap, and we decided to put it on the ceiling in here too in the kitchen, just to give a little bit of depth, a little bit of character to the space. So I know shiplap kind of has a bad rap because it's, it tends to lean a bit more farmhouse, but I do think that wall treatments and millwork can be very, very timeless. 
I hope that these kitchen design tips were helpful for you. If you are remodeling or planning a design, we have a design firm, Boxwood Avenue Interiors. If you want more tips and tricks, you can always visit boxwoodavenue.com and you can shop anytime at Boxwood Avenue Mercantile.